All right, guys, one of the things that we all have to do with water-based clay is digging out the sculpture. This process is really not as intimidating as it looks. The idea is that you have to make your sculpture hollow. That way, the firing process will work. You don't want to leave one dense sculpting mass. What that happens is that, like, the clay shrinks as water evaporates so if it's just too dense it'll crack and break and also potentially when you're sculpting there's going to be air bubbles inside that could potentially like blow up in the kiln so the idea here is that you dig in as much as possible you don't have to get a lot but maybe get like a just a little bit on the inside and I usually try and do this midway into the sculpture, right before I do very small details. You can tell there's still some anatomical problems with the sculpture. And I just find like little bits, like in the thighs where I can dig in as much as possible to the front of the knee, to the back. The idea is that you wanna connect these holes all into one piece. So we're digging the clay out and trying to get rid of as much as possible because also keep in mind that if you take a sculpture to get fired at a uh, you know a ceramics place they're going to charge you based on weight anyway so you want to make it as light as possible and it is much nicer to have a sculpture that's a little bit light because if you're going to be putting it somewhere and this is a 15 inch tall sculpture I think it's a little bit bigger than 15 inches clay is very dense and it's very heavy so what to, that means is that it's going to be a little bit difficult to kind of put up on shelves and have it not you know break but also when you're firing sculpture you want a hollow piece throughout the entire figure so I'm building this hole here and that hole, I'm gonna connect it to the first hole that I did. So I'm putting a hole here and I'm gonna dig down as much as possible and I'm gonna dig up as much as possible. That way I can connect these two holes together. And I'm gonna do this throughout the entire figure. It's not as intimidating as it looks. I know that you're destroying a lot of the anatomy of the sculpture when you're doing this. But remember, I'm doing a fired sculpture, so I'm not gonna be making a mold of this. You can do this for very large, large pieces as well. It doesn't have to be very small pieces like this. It could be something rather large. So from the top of the head, I have the skewer that I'm gonna be pulling out. And what that means is that there's gonna be a hole throughout and into the rib cage so I'm gonna dig a hole from the top of the head and I'm gonna dig into the neck. And it's fairly easy. You know, I'm not gonna be spending a lot of time digging the entire head because there's not much mass in there, but I wanna be able to get rid of the place where that skewer was. And just taking like clay a little bit at a time, enough to get to the middle because I'm going to be digging just a little bit more on the back of the sculpture. But this way, using a wire tool, you can kind of scoop out quite a bit and into the neck. Remember, it gets very fragile as you hollow it out, so you have to keep that in mind when you're hollowing it. And now I'm digging from the back of the head. That's going to just help me remove a little bit of the mass of the hair that's going to keep the head also a little bit lighter the last thing you want is a very heavy head and it tends to be that way like the head just that head alone weighs quite a bit because it was pretty solid the skewer was there just to hold it initially when I was building it because it takes a lot of stress keeping the amount of mass with the hair stable and that keep sinking in
At this point, I am digging the back of the head. I picked this place because I can connect it to the hips from the other holes. And I can scoop up and into the neck from the holes I made in the head. So I'm connecting all of these holes together. And you should be able to feel your tool going into the hollows. That will, there's going to be a little bit less resistance. The clay also removed from the rib cage and the torso are going to be a lot wetter. You can use the clay that you remove from here as well. So digging the thigh and to score it what I usually do I get like the clay to be extremely wet. So remember we've linked all of these holes together. I've dug as much as possible out and now I'm going to be sealing it in. I wet the clay as much as possible and then I use a very thick large tool to kind of push it down but I'm going to let this dry overnight and add just a little bit more clay in the surface remember this part is going to be a little bit thinner and what I found is that over the years when you add clay that's a little bit thinner in one part it tends to crack but that's not going to be that big of an issue make sure you get the thigh really wet and then get the clay that you put in as wet as the clay of the thigh and then you're not going to have that big of an issue unless the thickness is going to be much thinner in the clay that you put in in this case my clay is a little bit thinner i've encountered this in other sculptures as well and the way to fix it i do plan on painting the sculpture after it's fired so that's going to be fixable even if there's like some hairline cracks i'll be able to fix it when i remove it for the kiln the whole idea here is that now at this point i'm like adding a little bit more because i need to connect the head to the torso or to the um, the rib cage but it's the same process you just want to have one entire shape inside that's hollow you don't want to have, say, the head hollow and the body one solid piece because the head is going to explode because it needs a way to vent. So after I make all of these holes, the last step, if you watch some of my old videos, is that I'll turn the sculpture upside down after it's dry. And I usually take a, a drill bit and a very large drill bit and I'll just like drill it so it hits the hollow part of the body that way all the air when you fire the sculpture will escape through the bottom at this point it's only a matter of like sealing it getting the clay really wet and then just using your tools to push and mend it with the body there's still going to be some sculpting that you're going to be doing all the fine details are going to be done after this process but you can tell that as soon as I add a little bit of clay, it pretty much disappears. There's not a lot that it leaves with the clay. But I tend to do this at a later stage, maybe around the middle of the clay, the, the sculpture, and then I just kind of join it all together. But this is very much a standard practice for figure sculptures in water-based clay everybody kind of has to do this there's different artists like Philippe Farouk that has a very intricate way of doing it I tend to do it midway and it seems to work out fairly well this clay is a grog clay so it will be a very good clay for firing and that's pretty much it of the sculpture I really appreciate you guys watching I'll be finishing the sculpture up and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.